Production and trade are among the fundamental engines of economic growth in a globalized world economy. However, one critical aspect stands out, the connection between production and environmental pollution. This visual series is part of the SMEP program, established by the United Kingdom's Foreign, Commonwealth and Development Office in partnership with UNCTAD. Through these episodes, we'll analyze the role of exports in industrial pollution caused by important manufacturing sectors in the Sub-Saharan Africa and South Asia regions. Plastic pollution is also on our radar. Using evidence generated by the SMEP program, we'll indicate ways to solve this problem, which is critical for the local population and the entire planet. We'll address these issues by taking a closer look at the policies and technologies used to combat pollution in four sample countries in Sub-Saharan Africa and South Asia, Tanzania, Kenya, Pakistan, and Bangladesh. Located in South Asia, Bangladesh is one of the most populous countries in the world, with more than half of its population living in rural areas. It's also home to the Sundarbans Forest, one of the largest mangrove forests in the world. Bangladesh exported $42 billion worth of manufactured goods in 2020. This production, aimed at foreign markets, causes a significant environmental impact at the source. A life cycle analysis of selected Bangladesh manufactured exports reveals various environmental and human health impacts. The textile industry is considered one of the largest sources of pollution in the world. The main impacts are related to the use of harmful chemicals, high water and energy consumption, and the generation of large amounts of solid and gaseous waste. Bangladesh is an important producer of jute, a natural product that can act as a substitute to plastics in many sectors. Jute fiber production is the stage that contributes the most to local environmental impacts in terms of land use and marine ecotoxicity through the use of fertilizers and pesticides in the cultivation of jute plants. In addition, the production also has negative impacts on non-carcinogenic toxicity for humans as the plants absorb large amounts of metals from the soil or water. It's always uh, important to understand the full scale of our impacts. And our impacts are not simply the use of a product. Uh, they include from cradle to grave to cradle, uh, all the aspects of its, its generation and use and, and disposal. So life cycle analysis becomes critically important for things that have different impacts at different stages of their life. Uh, extracting resources to make something, uh, to use of these things and then disposal as waste of these things have different impacts and life cycle analysis allows you to go through uh, the, all the different impacts. For a decision maker, uh, a life cycle approach provides that tool to understand the entire um, environmental impact of a product from cradle to grave so to speak. Uh, so that they're able to take an informed decision um, while sort of designing policies and initiatives. The jute is a natural fiber and is also known as uh, the golden fiber as well. And as far as we can uh, see in the history of jute, it has a long history of two, three thousand years back also. It, has, uh, it was used uh, in the packaging of uh, the agriculture goods it's also uh, at this point of time is also used as uh, you know packaging of the uh, commodities like uh, wheat, barley, and these kind of products are uh, packed into the bags. From an economic point of view, the sector is flourishing as it promotes local jobs, helps local farmers, and reduces poverty in the country. However, that alone is not enough. Okay, so the textile sector and the textile industry is extremely important, you know, whether it's from the perspective of foreign exchange, employment, growth, etc. But um, the problem is that this, the um, production and use of textiles has grown very rapidly and continues to grow. But at the same time, um, due to very low reuse and recycling in the sector, we're also finding that 
the amount of waste generated in the sector and the amount of textile that is being disposed of has also increased phenomenally. I'd say on the positive side, the awareness about sustainability and circularity in the textile sector has never been more. There is a lot happening uh, by the governments, by industries in terms of you know, transparency standards, um, guidelines for cotton cultivation, um, you know, restricted material use, etc. But I think the real challenge is how do we move from some of these niche interventions in the larger brands to make this more mainstream across the entire textile sector. I think one more issue is that apart from these interventions, we really need a systemic change in the textile sector so that it moves away from mass production of short-lived disposable products to production of long-use uh, products which sort of remain in the economy uh, for, for a much longer period. From governments to the private sector, institutions and civil society, we all need to act and help improve the quality not only of textile materials and processes, but also of our personal choices and consumption habits. This is how SMEP works. Identifying challenges by listening to local voices and funding the development and implementation of solutions to the industrial pollution in targeted regions. Our aim is to improve the environmental governance of production and exports, paving the way for competitive and environmentally sustainable products that are compatible with SDG 12 and value the health of workers and populations involved in the production of goods we all consume. Want to know more? Visit our dashboard for a complete overview and data access resulting from the work of the SMEP program.